Let's translate Romans 6, 23. Kagar opsonia tis amartias thanatos, to de charisma tu theu, zoe eonios, en Christo Jesu to curio imon. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is life eternal in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's diagram it. We have our post-positive conjunction. And we have article noun. This is our nominative. Then we have a genitive. Article noun. Then we have another noun also in the nominative matching with opsonia here. So implied here is the verb to be, estin. And we have another conjunction. You can see the parallelism here. Okay, so we have a post-positive conjunction here, plus our new noun, article noun in the nominative, then article noun in the genitive, estin is implied, and then we have a new nominative noun pointing back to charisma here. And then we have an adjective which matches nominative singular here, nominative singular here, so this is an attributive adjective. It describes what kind of life. It's eternal life. We'll talk more about that later. And then, again, Esten being implied here, so it's hanging out there in the middle unseen. The dative goes with the verb. So in Christ. Where is this gift? It's in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, let's take a look at the vocabulary. First up, opsonion. It literally means pay or wages, but it's basically the ration or money paid to a soldier. So, you can see down here, Romans 6.23 is still further from the military scene. It's probably better to class it under the following. Compensation. Compens compensation for services. And they have the example here. The compensation paid by sin for services rendered to it is death. So compensation. Sin, amartia, this is to miss the mark, to err. So in the sense of sin, it means as a, as a spear missing the mark. Then we have thanatos, death, termination of physical life. Death viewed transcendently in contrast to living relationship with God. This is the extension or figurative meaning of one. And here you see eternal death with Romans 6.23. So it's in contrast, in parallelism to what comes later with eternal life. Then we have charisma. This is related to the cognate noun charis, grace. And it means that which is freely and graciously given. This is favored, bestowed. It's a gift.
Generally, it's the earthly goods bestowed by God. So, example, the privileges granted to the people of Israel, the gracious gift of rescue from mortal danger, spiritual possession of the believer, gracious gift of redemption. And so we have the gift of God, life eternal, Romans 6, 23. Life here is life in the physical sense. Notice that Zoe has to do with substance, property, without which there would not be life. It could mean transcendent life. And as a subclass here, life of the believers, which proceeds from God and Christ. And here we see it's a resurrection to everlasting life. Anastasis Zoe's Eonios. Okay. And so this is actually pointing towards resurrection life, a resurrection proceeding from life. Zo Zoe Eonios, as in many passages just cited, it has an unmistakable eschatological connotation. So that's in the back of our minds. But you can see here we have Zoe and Zoe Eonios. used of life in the blessed period of final consummation in the coming age eternal life and this is as a result of the last judgment so this is heavy overtones of eschatology here when we look at aeonios it further emphasizes this eschatology it typically means eternal. And it pertains to a long period of time, long ago. Well, that's not what we have here. Pertaining to a period of time without beginning or end, eternal. That's not what we have here because without beginning, no, that, that doesn't make sense. Pertaining to a period of unending duration, without end. Now, that's what we have here. Life forever, not quite that. Eternal life. They you Zoe Eonios. Now that's what we have here, although this isn't a quote from Romans. In the reign of God, Zoe. Eonios. So while Romans 6.23 is not quoted here, that is what we're what we're looking at. And you can see Romans 6.22 and following. So it is quoted here. Having to do with the reign of God. Now, one comment on the prepositional phrase, en Christo Yesu to Kyrio Imon. You can see the preposition N. It's dative. It's, it's the workhorse of the New Testament. And so it's got a lot of different meanings and, and understandings. Marker of a position defined as being in a location, in, among. Marker of a state or condition, in. Marker of extension toward a goal that is understood to be within an area or condition, into. Marker of close association within a limit, in. And here it is, Romans 6.23. Paul has the most varied expressions for this new life principle, life in Christ. So what is this referring to? especially in Paul or Johannine usage, to designate a close personal relation in which the referent of the end term is viewed as the controlling influence. Under the control of, under the influence of, 
in close association with. So this is life given in close association with Christ. But this is a subclass of marker of close association within a limit. Within a limit. And you can see in A here, it means equal to in someone, which is in one's innermost being. And here you can see an example, en avto ectisti ta panta, probably to be understood as local, not instrumental, since en avto would otherwise be identical with di avto. in the same verse. So what I'm pointing out here is while this might be close association with within a limit, there is this inherent idea of N being local. So what I want to show you is the grammar. If we go to Wallace, we can see the preposition N, the workhorse of prepositions in the New Testament. You can see, let's work our way backwards. It can be an equivalent for East, which is in the accusative, in or into with verbs of motion. That's not what we have here. It's not a verb of motion. Date of standard or date of rule according to the standard of. Maybe that's it. That could be it. Thing possessed with. With Christ Jesus. No, that doesn't make sense. Manner with. No, that doesn't make sense. Reference respect. With respect to Christ Jesus. Uh, maybe, although that seems a little weird. Instrumental by Christ Jesus. Mm, that doesn't quite make sense either cause because of because of Christ Jesus that could be it association often close personal relationship translated with with Christ Jesus maybe that could be it temporal meaning this is time in within when while during no that's not it and then lastly spatial or sphere in I would say it's spatial sphere in Christ Jesus, you can see association could be part of that, but when you translate it with, that doesn't really make sense, with Christ Jesus, in association with Christ Jesus. With respect to Christ Jesus could be the case, but I think it's, I think it's more spatial. Now, if we check out the use of the dative, the idea of place, the idea of instrument, the true dative, we have the dative direct, indirect object. That's not what we have here. Dative of interest, including advantage or disadvantage. That's not what we have here. Dative of reference, respect with reference to. Okay, let's check this one out. The date of substantive is that in reference to which something is presented as true. An author will use this data to qualify a statement that would otherwise typically not be true. That is not what we're working with here. Ethical data, data of feeling as far as I'm concerned, that's not what we're dealing with. Data of destination. Basically, remember that this broad to idea is in re relation to an intransitive verb. The dative with erchome accounts for most examples. Hard to say that this is the case when there is no actual verb. Although estin itself um, estin is or imi is itself intransitive. But it just doesn't quite make sense. 
date of a recipient. So although it's kind of tempting to say, oh yeah, we're the recipients of eternal life, uh, this would mark the recipient and why would Christ be receiving eternal life? Basically, remember that this is a personal noun in the dative case occurring in verbless constructions. We have a verbless construction, but we don't have a personal noun. And it's also not a title and salu salutation. Date of possession belonging to, possessed by, eternal life possessed by Christ Jesus. That doesn't make sense. Date of a thing possessed, who possesses, eternal life, who possesses Christ Jesus. That uh, doesn't quite make sense. Predicate dative. The, the dative substantive makes an assertion about another dative substantive, much like a predicate nominative does. The difference, however, is that with the predicate dative, the equative verb is a participle. Well, we don't have a participle. Dative in simple apposition, though not technically a syntactical category, the dative case can be an appositive to another substantive in the same case. Not what we have here. Now we get into local dative uses. This is where I think we need to be looking. Dative of place, which is equivalent to dative of sphere. So in the sphere of, the dative substantive indicates the sphere or realm in which the word to which it is related takes place or exists. So life eternal is in Christ Jesus. Uh, so I argued earlier, or I said earlier, that en Christo Jesu to, to Kyrio Imon falls under the implied estin. So this life, this gift, the gift of eternal life is in Christ Jesus. It's located in. It's in the sphere of, or in the realm of. It is easy to confuse a dative of reference or respect with a dative of sphere, even though the resulting ideas frequently have the opposite meaning. In general, it is safe to say that the dative of reference views the word to which the dative stands related as detached or separated somehow from the dative, while the dative of sphere views the word to which the dative stands related as incorporated within the realm of the dative. For example, in Romans 6, 2, hey, that's our context, isn't it? Paul uses the dative of reference. How shall we who died with reference to sin still live in it? Here, we who died is detached or separated from sin. In Ephesians 2, 1, we see the dative of sphere. Though you were dead in the sphere of your sins, here, you were dead is incorporated within the realm of sin. There are exceptions to this rule of thumb, but in those passages that seem to violate this rule, the distinction between reference and sphere also seems to be more blurred. It's not dative of time, telling us when, which would be temporal. Dative of rule, in conformity with, that's not making sense. And then we have our instrumental dative uses. They basically bear means in association with, manner this is adverbial means instrument agency this is tempting just because it marks the personal agent by whom the action of the verb is accomplished but it's rare and if it's expressing agency the noun and the dative must not only be personal, but must also be the agent who performs the action. And that can't be the case since the verb or action is simply to be. It's not measure or degree. Is it cause? Well, it's the cause or basis of the action. 
The use of the dative is similar to, but not the same as the dative of means. Dative of means indicates how. Dative of cause indicates why. Well, this isn't answering why. We have cognate dative. Material, that's not the case. Content, that's not the case. So, I'm going to argue this is a dative of sphere. Let's see if the commentaries agree. Endless debate will probably continue to gather around Paul's expression in Christ Jesus, for it signifies a central feature of the Christian life that is better experienced than explained. But, looking at Adolf Theismann, it looks like it's local. It's hotly, uh, I guess you could say it's hotly debated. It doesn't seem to be uh, instrumental by any means because there was already a good phrase for that with dia. But we don't have dia here. We have n. It seems that one must recognize that Paul's in Christ Jesus motif frequently carries a quite definite local flavor. In Christ Jesus is the dominant expression of Paul for the intimate and personal relationship that exists between the exalted Christ and those who have committed themselves to him. And while the expression certainly has corporate overtones and social implications, it is used so often and in such individualistic settings that it must be understood as much more than just an extension of meaning from a more fundamental concept of corporeity or instrumentality. So this coming from the NIGTC, New International Greek Textual Commentary, and in this case, the author is Longenecker. But really, Longenecker's relying on Diceman, and it looks like local dative. And if it's local, we're talking sphere or place. Jesus is the sphere in which this gift of eternal life is provided. And so we're left with four, the wages, the compensation of services rendered of sin is death. But the gift, the benefits bestowed of God is life everlasting, or we'll say everlasting life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button. Check out the videos on Hebrew and Greek so you can brush up or learn the biblical languages. And we'll see you next time.